Hello from Central Park, New York City. About to attempt the first ever Central Park Loop Hour record. Welcome to the GCN Show. With love. Welcome to the GCN Show. This week, with the automotive industry getting a whiff of money to be made from e-bikes, will they end up taking over the industry, putting smaller e-bike companies out of business? Well, the first indications that they might are already there. We've also got some news of a new world record for distance ridden in one week, and you will not believe just how far it is. We've also got a new Strava art record and the world's fastest race lube, and you get your chance to get your hands or wrists on a Wahoo Rival watch. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that Wout van Aert just cannot win a gold medal at a major road championships. Wout added a silver medal at the individual world champs in Flanders on Sunday to go with the silver he won in the time trial and road race last year and his silver medal at the Olympic Games road race in mm. July. Yes, very unfortunate, and I imagine he's quite frustrated, but there's not much that you can do about an informed Filippo Ganna, is there? Uh, we also learned that Manon has just done her first ever gravel race, and not only did she enjoy it, she did really well, as did Alex, although it wasn't his first ever gravel race. Yeah, and it wasn't just any race, it was the national championships. Stay tuned for the full video coming out later this week to see exactly how they both did. Yes, looking forward to that one. And finally, we learned that now e-bikes are taking over the world, it might be the automotive industry that takes over the e-bike world. In recent weeks, we've been reporting on some fairly bonkers motor-assisted contraptions, hydrofoil bikes. No. <laughs> never gets old. And never will do, no. I don't think. There was also a bike skidoo, and at the recent IA show, BMW debuted a concept bike, which is the BMW iVision Ambi. It would currently be illegal, but its designers hope to kickstart a dialogue about e-bike regulations. So it's got a 2,000 watt hour battery and power to get you up to 60 kilometers per hour. However, the interesting bit is that they are suggesting that inbuilt GPS technology could act as a limiter on the motor when the rider is on cycling infrastructure as opposed to the open roads. So then it will only assist you up to 25 kilometers per hour as it is currently. And I actually quite like that thinking. Yeah, I believe Canyon first suggested it actually with their radical concept car last yeah. I think you're right, they did. I did particularly enjoy the slightly self-pitying tone from the BMW press release, which stated, the BMW group is showing its keenness to remain part of the mobility conversation in cities, even if in the years ahead, those cities offer motor cars an increasingly small space in which to function. Can you hear a tiny violin play? A little bit, <laughs> but uh, not over the usual GCN show background music. No. Yes, and we need to apologise for last week's GCN show, by the way. We had about 4,000 of you in the comments complaining about the loud background music. <laughs> to be honest, I think the editor probably thought that Si and myself were a little bit too boring. Uh, anyway, there was a very interesting article on cycling industry news recently. About the background music? No, about car companies getting into bikes, or rather, the mobility conversation. Now, it seems like there's a genuine concern from some in the bike industry about car companies and motorbike companies like Harley-Davidson getting into manufacturing bikes. With their huge clout and, I guess, lobbying potential, they've got the power to disrupt the cycling industry and essentially take over but having made it more like the motor industry whilst they do that, which is the big fear, I think, for all of us. The question is though, do car companies actually have what it takes to create bikes good enough that any of us would want to ride them? What do you think? Well, looking back, I would say that Lotus have made a reasonably good job of that one, haven't they? Okay, that's a good one. I'll grant you, Lotus made a cracking bike. 10 out of 10 for that one, world-beating bike, Lasting legacy. Really long lasting legacy. In fact, you will well know that we've made a couple of documentaries about the Lotus bike and the more recent Hope edition, and you can find both of those over on GCN Plus if you haven't already watched them. What though about Porsche? Personally, I don't think the bike industry has much to worry about here. Despite the price tag, these share a remarkable similarity with our Amazon special, <laughs> the Euro bike. I mean, it's pretty gaudy, isn't it? Yes, it's not the best looking bike no. in the world, I've got to say. Uh, one out of 10, I would say, for Porsche's effort there. Uh, what though about Aston Martin? 
Well, they caused quite a stir with their Factor 177, and not only because it cost £25,000 and you needed to have bought an Aston Martin car as well. It is, of course, a collaboration with the bike manufacturer Factor, but that brand originally came about from the first version of the bike created by BERU F1 Systems, who also designed the mind-blowing tech on this collaboration as well. They are a team of super smart engineers who work in F1, but who also have a passion for bikes too, and so put their know-how from one into the other, yielded a bike with a kind of onboard data collection that we still haven't really caught up with today. No, we're getting there, but they were way ahead of their time with that bike, and therefore, I would give that collaboration a solid eight out of 10. Now, the issue with this one isn't that the bike wasn't good, because it was, it's because of that price tag of £25,000. It was designed as a headline grabber, a concept, I guess, to draw in the exceedingly well-heeled, and so it hasn't really done a great deal to influence the bike industry, and even less, I would say, for us cyclists in general. The Cornago Ferrari did, though, 10 out of 10 <laughs> for that one. Perhaps not with the internal gearbox, but the full carbon fibre frame and the hydraulic brakes. Yeah, no wonder it gets a 10 out of 10 from Yukon. It does from me as well, although it is far more Colnago than it is Ferrari, in my opinion. Uh, as we see with lots of the collaborations between motorised companies, as we fair to McLaren though, they actually did do stuff on the Specialised Venge 10 years ago that was the result of their collaboration, including shaving 100 grams off the frame and boosting stiffness, and that's had quite the legacy in the sport. It even looks like a relative bargain next to today's price because it was only $5,000 for the frame set back in those days. Oh, the good old days when cutting edge was just 5K for a frame. <laughs> You know, one brand that has done a huge amount already to influence the bike industry is Peugeot. I mean, their legendary pro team is the most successful team in history and their bike won countless of the biggest well, races. Not hold your horses, Connor, because actually Peugeot Cycles and Peugeot Automobiles are not the same company. Or at least they're not anymore because they split, I think it was 1926. Oh, yeah, good knowledge there, Dan. Mm. I seemed like yesterday to you. Thank you. <laughs> It's why I'm here for you, Connor. Uh, Peugeot cycles are still going, by the way, but they are unlikely to trouble the Tour de France anytime soon, you'd imagine, when you look at their current lineup. So, what are we saying then, Dan? Clearly, the automotive industry has a little clue about bikes as it stands, but there are some very smart people out there with a lot of money behind them that perhaps could work it out fairly quickly. Well, I think that if they sniff that there could be some money to be made in it, the big car brands could gear up pretty quickly and create some incredible e-bikes. But I would also say it will only be e-bikes because as we've seen, as we've given examples of so far in the show, there's been no point or indeed success in them doing anything with standard bikes. Yes, personally, I can't see how as it stands, they'll do anything vastly different to what's currently going on other than perhaps recruiting some bike industry engineering talent to show them how to do it. But were they to lobby for change to e-bike legislation and so forth, then perhaps. Mm. And even if they did, could you imagine the prices that we might end up paying for bikes? How many bikes, for example, would BMW need to create the kind of margins that they make on all of their cars? It doesn't quite seem to stack up, if you ask me, although perhaps they need to look at hydrogen-powered personal rocket packs. Oh, someone should start a YouTube channel about those, <laughs> <laughs> just in case. We'd be very interested to know what you think about all this, though. Are car companies welcome in the cycling space, or can they take their mega bucks and move it on. I think I know what people are going to write about that. Uh, also, let us know which you think are the best and the worst car bike collaborations. Let us know. Next up, your weekly GCN inspiration, your chance to win one of three prizes each and every week. We pick our favourite three photos that you submitted to the GCN app. Uh, in third place this week, receiving a GCN Elite Fly Duo Pack water bottle set is Jake Smith. Uh, my flight got in too late to make my race, but I could see the weather had great potential for some dynamic photos. Uh, I told my wife to bring my camera gear to the airport. We headed straight to the race just in time to capture my team at the front of the race with a double rainbow behind them. Oh Spectacular stuff. Brilliant, look at that. And particularly apt with the World Championships on this week. It is very apt. Mm. Must have been feeling a bit though, not being in the race, feel sorry for you. Yes, but, uh, gutted. Brilliant photo. Well, they're flying to the race, you're a fully fledged pro, blimey. Yeah. Moving on to second place, um, and the winner of a GCN Epic Climbs Koppenberg uh, t-shirt and a GCN stainless steel bottle, 500ml in black, is Nick Sharman. Wow, look at that. Um, no Epic without an Epic sunset. 
too, right? Uh, this is after rain, non-existing tracks, sand and stones. We suddenly found ourselves in the middle of a forest next to a lake with an amazing sunset. The photo does not show the magic of the moment. Get mm. out and ride, my friends. Yes, doesn't say exactly where in the world that is. Doesn't really matter, does it? No. It looks spectacular. I love a sunset, I just love it. <laughs> well, we do choose rather a lot of sunset photos for the inspirational winners. So uh, if you want to give yourself a bit more chance, Wait for it to be sunny. Doesn't give people in the UK much chance, although it's been all right recently. Uh, meanwhile, in first place, getting a GSIN Pursuit maroon t shirt, a GSIN Pursuit bright blue t shirt, and GSIN's essential guide to bike maintenance and a GSIN mug. These prizes get better every week. It's Jaco de Vries, a blissful Monday morning ride. Great misty morning commute to Utrecht, Holland. Fantastic. Lovely. Yeah, I love that. I love this time of year. Um, actually, outside my back window, I can see the mist going over the fields in the morning. It does have a very different feel to the middle of summer, doesn't it? And it creates yeah. some spectacular opportunities for photos just like that. It reminds me of uh, when I used to live in Belgium when I was still racing those early mornings at the end of the season. You're nearly at the end of it all um, and you just had some beautiful, beautiful uh, rides like that. Gets a bit really. fresh early in the mornings, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's still quite warm in the day. Great stuff. Uh, right, don't forget to get involved ready for next week's show. Just submit your best cycling photos to the app and we'll pick three of our favourites next week. It's now time for cycling shorts. Cycling shorts now and let's start with a little update about Dan Zwift Academy. It's now a week since I did my baseline fitness test and I'm ready for workout one. I have done one ride for transparency between that. That was the day after the baseline test. I did some filming with Sai, including 20 minutes at 252 watts. Uh, now, I was pretty tired at the end of that and it was a one-off effort without any beforehand. So I have now set my FTP to 240 because I'm hoping that that is going to help me get through this over under VO2 max intervals, which don't sound like much fun. Uh, it's a session of just under one hour where I'll be hovering above and below my VO2 max with some rest intervals in between. I'm gonna need some luck for this one, but hopefully, like I said, I'll get through it. 10 minute warm up to start with, then a minute ramp up, then three minutes at 145, two at 275, one at 230, one at 275, two at 230. That sounds very tough. Six minutes break, repeat, six minutes break, Repeat. Oh, only done one block of three. I mean, I don't want to take anything away from Sai's recent efforts at the Further East event, but if he thought that was hard, he should have tried the first session from the Zwift Academy. My goodness. Let's find a tough time. I found it very tough. That's an understatement, to be honest. Uh, anyway, I am going to try and get a couple more sessions done on the Zwift Academy this week, which should mean that I'm able to do the fourth session as a group rider this weekend whilst I'm in Flanders, because I'm heading over to the World Championships. Uh, if we do manage to do that, we will keep you posted on social media with confirmation and timings, etc. But if all goes to plan, those of you who are interested should be able to join me on that session. You gonna join me, Connor? Um, no, I think I'll just watch. Um, Thanks. But anyway, right, moving on from Dan to Sai, who was doing his own challenge over the weekend at Further East, a 400 mile epic gravel race. And yes, epic is a deserved description for that particular event. Now, he claimed to me initially that his only aim with that event was to finish. But then soon after, he then told me his aim was to finish before it got dark on day two. So he was already heightening his ambitions. And knowing Sai, I dare say it wasn't long into the event that he started to get very, very competitive. He loves to race still, doesn't he? He does, so he can't help but race, can he? Well, let's hear from the man himself. How's the body holding up, Sai? Well, yeah, not very well, to be honest with you, Connor. Um, I've been shuffling around like an old man for the last couple of days. My knees, oh, my knees are killing me. Lower back, ah, shoulders, um, my right tricep, Weirdly, just the right one. Not entirely sure what that says, but uh, anyway, and the worst thing of all, without a doubt the worst thing, uh, ironically almost, given how robust and sturdy you think they should be, but my ankles, my ankles have been the weak link. Um, so, uh, so yeah, the body's in bits, but I've got to say, I had a good time. Maybe not all the time during the event, but, uh, but it was just incredible and so different to anything that I've ever done before. Um, a whole different community of bike riders. Wicked, really, really cool. So I cannot wait for everyone to see the video. It's going up, not this weekend, but the weekend after, which 
will hopefully be uh, about the time when I can walk again. So, uh, brilliant. Well, I hope your ankles aren't swollen, Si, because that really would be a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> I'll tell you what really would feel Si with fear, though, is the prospect of doing 311 miles per day for seven days straight, and that is exactly what Josh Quigley has just done. In doing so, and racking up 2,179 miles, or about 3,500 kilometres, he has broken the world record for distance ridden in one week. Unbelievable. Now, that record had been held by the Australian ultra-endurance rider Jack Thompson, who you may remember recently rode the entire Tour de France route in the space of just 10 days. His marker was 3,505 kilometres, which means Quigley rode just two kilometres further. That is cutting it fine. Yes. <laughs> and let's hope all those calculations were correct. But hats off to Josh. It's 501 kilometres a day for seven days. That's not for the faint heart. It's not. No. Sticking with Epic Rise just a little longer though, two cyclists here in the UK have created the world's longest ever piece of Strava art. That's right, Georgie Cottle and David Charles rode a total of 2,200 miles, absolutely smashing the previous record, which was only just over 750 kilometres. And in doing so, they drew out these words, Refugees welcome. Now uh, that was ridden across the south of England, an entry point for refugees seeking asylum over here in the UK. And not only did they put out a strong message, they also raised over £50,000 sterling, five times the original target for Choose Love, which provides humanitarian aid to and advocacy for refugees around the world. Brilliant stuff. So well done to both of you. That really is very impressive indeed. Now, some good news for cyclists and I guess everybody over in New York because the city has removed a lane for motor vehicles on Brooklyn Bridge and made it into a bike lane so that cyclists can ride safely, separated from both pedestrians and from motorists. A big step that on what is the country's most iconic bridge and one of the most iconic the world over, really. 60,000 cyclists per day are expected to use a new cycling infrastructure, as well as 10,000 pedestrians. At times, they are a changing, as Bob Dylan once said. <laughs> He did, yes. Uh, meanwhile, over in the Netherlands, which is of course famous for having more bikes than people, they are making even more provisions for cyclists. So their stated aim is that before 2025, they will make space for an extra 100,000 bike parking spots around train stations and other busy places around the country. And 4,000 of those will be next to the main Amsterdam Central train station, where they are building an underwater bike parking garage. Whilst building it, they also claim to be providing space for underwater plants to grow and fish to shelter. Remarkable stuff, yes. Now those provisions include a structure which is apparently built out of porous concrete. Uh, that allows those plants to grow. They've also got coconut mats to help purify the water and bio huts, which basically seem to be mesh baskets for fish. That all sounds quite in depth. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Well, the whole thing smells rather fishy to me, Connor. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> anyway, we have got some tech news for you now. Well, kind of. Orbea teased us all with a new aero bike at the Vuelta, but haven't disclosed any information on it thus far. No, they haven't. Uh, we filmed the pro bike of Juan Jose Lobato, and that is an awesome looking prototype version. But Orbea were very tight lipped about any specifics to do with that new bike. Now, however, there's a new landing page on their website where you can sign up to find out a little bit more about the new bike and some of the meanings of the semi-hidden messages that we found on Lobato's frame when we filmed that over at La Vuelta. We'll put a link in the description, so take a look at that and it will take you to the landing page. And in other tech news, Markov have just released what they say is the world's fastest race loop. Mm, and it is called Ludicrous AF, which I presume means ludicrous and fast. Or maybe not. But it has been in development for quite some time now at their in-house R&D department and also done in conjunction with pro teams such as the Ineos Grenadiers. And that team incidentally was already using this brand new lube back at the Giro d'Italia in May and they of course won that race with Egan Bernal. Now, according to their press release, this lube penetrates deep into the chain links, and as you ride, the molecules within the formula react with the surface of the chain, leading to the creation of a fluid shear plane which helps to reduce friction. That's the end result. You will go faster for the same amount of power. And noise too. Apparently, this makes your drivetrain very, very quiet. And I was thinking, this could help you with your Zwift Academy ambitions, Dan. Uh, I think with the power measured at the back of your drivetrain on your Wahoo. True, I guess a more efficient chain would lead to less loss of power from Arts the pedals to the Wahoo, yes. 
I'll take everything I can get. Uh, anyway, speaking of Zwift, there's Zwift Racing League resumes in about a week's time, and we are entering a team, aren't we? We are. Um, you're, you're not actually part of it, Dan. Uh, huh. you, got, you got away with it. A uh, bit, bit to go, a bit of work to do yet. But yes, <laughs> we are entering a team, although we are not in the top Premier League because that is that's out of our league, but rather in Division A, with the prospect of promotion next year if we do well enough. Well, I will wait to join you once you reach the Premier Division, if you get promoted then. Uh, there are going to be a huge number of teams taking part from all over the world, and it's every Monday at 19.30 BST. And if you'd like to join, you can, to race against thousands of others around the world. And if you can't get a team together yourself, then simply head to the Zwift Facebook community page, where you're probably going to find some teams that are in need of a rider or two. I'm starting to get a little bit nervous about it, personally. Well, that's a good sign, Connor, because if you're not nervous, you're not up for it. So the fact that you're nervous means that you are well up for smashing it, I reckon. Hopefully. Here's hoping anyway. Um, but we'll finish with Cycling Shorts by announcing a brand new giveaway, courtesy of our mates over at Wahoo. Yes, this is your opportunity to get your hand or your wrist, as I said earlier, on one of five Wahoo rival watches that we've got to give away. I was using it a lot actually when I was running before I got injured and stopped running. Anyway, all you need to do to put yourself in with a chance of winning is click on the link which is in the description below, fill out the form, answer a simple question, and then submit it. Good luck, everyone. Hack forward slash bodge of the week now. Straight into it with this one from sy.c. 3D printed hack puncture repair kit housing. Uh, designed and 3D printed a simple housing to hold an air pump, inner tube, and tire levers for my Merida Reacto 5000. The housing is secured to the bottle cage mount, and opening is at the non drive side with a snap fit cover. How neat does that look? It's very, very neat. It is pretty big, Dan. I mean, I like it because I could probably fit a lot of bars in there as well, a lot of food can go in. The pure neatness of this, it mm. looks so fantastic. I am going to have to award that a hack. Yeah, I'll give it a hack too, I'll give it a hack. Okay, oh, yeah. well, uh, unsurprisingly, 85% of people said that was a hack. Fair one. And next up, David G. This is pretty cool, I think. So outside a bike shop in Buffalo, New York, when you really need a part, but the shop is closed. Brilliant. Mm. Well, I guess it's not a hack or a bodge, is it? It's just a vending machine that a shop's chosen to use, but I guess that also shouldn't take away from how good that is, because there's nothing worse, is there? That it might be on a Saturday night and you're preparing for a race or event the next day, realise that you've got something that's broken, or you broke it yourself, and you need a spare part, and there you go. Shop's shut, but you can still buy one. It would be a little bit frustrating if it got jammed, though, in the machine. <laughs> <laughs> Like yes. multiple in the tubes. Your rear derailleur just gets <laughs> agonizingly close to being dispensed, but not quite. Uh, I'll go with hack for that, even though I think it's just part of the bike shop. I'll go, I'll go hack. Go I'll on. go hack, because it is cool. I mean. Well, that was even more unanimous from the first one 93%. Uh, Alex M63. Homemade Zwifting sandals. Already starting to ask questions here. Uh, sick of ruining my good cycling shoes, so I hacked these old shoes and they work a treat. Dry shoes that don't stink, cooler on hot days. What, did, what, what are your first initial thoughts, Connor? So they're sick of ruining their good cycling sho shoes, so they've just ruined an, a different pair already. Well, they, they are old ones, apparently. But why don't you just use the old ones in the current state that they're in, rather than ruin them even more? I don't know. It's like you're purposely... I, I, but Alex seems to want cool feet on hotter days. Um, I've never had a huge problem with sweaty feet, thankfully. Uh, maybe Sai would like these, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to go bodge. Um, nice, nice toe paint, though. Like... <laughs> yes, I wasn't going to comment on that, but yes, we are actually with the majority on that one. Only just 58% voted bodge for the uh, Zwift sandals. Th this is... I'm a little bit nervous about this one, okay? so. They've said, my dad installed this on his bike after complaining about back pain. His first ride after three months. And um, what do you think? Is it a hack or are there better solutions? This is essentially what every team I ever rode for tried to do with my bike. <laughs> <laughs> so they'd get out and make it be a bigger bike. <laughs> and I'd look at it at the training camp and be like, oh no. With no. a mega long stem on it as well. Yeah, 15 just centimetres add some more leverage. Yeah. It just gets a bit... You can't do it, basically because your bike feels like it's all over the place, I think. Right. You get out of the saddle, you just be like, ooh. Well, what is the solution then for somebody that doesn't need it because they are as tall as you are, but just needs it because their back is in pain? Riser stem <sighs> I think might be slightly safer. Yeah, I think maybe get a bigger frame. Because I would say, well, yeah, there is that, but then the reach might be too far because it's not a huge stem. I would say that that 
Initially for me as a hack, because if you can carry on riding your bike pain-free by raising your handlebars, good on you. My only fear with those things is safety. Yeah, it does get a little bit dangerous when you've got that much steer tube out. Mm. Did you have any problems? Um, broken a couple, yeah. <laughs> Mm. The less happen. said about that, the better, I think. That sounds yeah. frightening. Uh, so I'm going to go with Bodge just because of the safety aspect. Yeah, I'm going to go with Bodge too, unfortunately. Okay. Um, well, most people did. Three quarters, precisely, in fact, voted Bodge. Uh, Ganfrey Boy 3 Matt Black Cranks, repainted my cranks after the colour rubbed off. I like this. I like it. I think it's very futuristic. Mm. What do you, what I, do you do, I mean, I'm, I would imagine it will rub off very quickly again, but... Presumably you can just spray paint them again. So yeah. it's a hack from me, that one. Yeah, I'll go hack as well. Nice 73% of uh, app users voted hack for that one. Next up is mountain bike Chickle Frio with an indoor sweat tra oh indoor trainer word. sweat catcher, which essentially looks like um, a double barreled bazooka on the bottom of your bike. I don't know what to say. It's, it's a bit big. I think it looks like some sort of hydrofoil. I think if Ollie had this on his bike, he'd like ride it into a lake. <laughs> Blimey. Well, I, I mean, it looks like that. it's capable of catching a lot of sweat. This is something else potentially for Sai, with a couple of guttering channels to then drip it onto the floor <laughs> by the looks of it. Um, I'm going to say bodge for that because you can just get one of those towel, you can just get a towel or you can get a specific one that goes over your bars to catch it before it gets to any part of your bike because with that it's just going to drip onto your frame anyway. I presume it, it protects the drivetrain as the main yeah. design. I mean it's a, it's a good thought but I think it's a bodge because the, the worst part, you don't want your sweat to get on your head tube really. I no. think on your steering, that's where it is because it's not really protecting that bit. So I'm going bodge, unfortunately. I'm going bodge as well. Uh, also, it looks quite sizable, so I'd probably catch my humongous calves on it as I was pedaling that bike. So would joking, I. Of course. Uh, well, 68% of people went with bodge for that one. Uh, and just before we finish, if you've been wondering why I've got a random disc brake clock on the desk here. Uh, it came in from Stuart Molden, who wrote in saying, I uh, want to say a big thank you to everybody at GCN for the videos we produce because they've helped him become a better cyclist and would we accept this gift? Well, I think it's uh, one of the only ever live hacks or bodges we've ever had on the GCN show. Uh, and so it's an immediate hack, but it would be anyway because that is a very nicely done clock with a disc brake rotor, what do you reckon? Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, thank you very much, Stuart. Much appreciated. And if you'd like to send in your hacks and bodges, please feel free to do so uh, to the office and we'll probably feature them. Caption competition now, your chance to win a GCN Elite water bottle. Last week on the show, we had Sonny Corbrelli after his brilliant win at the European Road Championships. And the winner of the many caption competitions that were sent in is Maton Master Sound with this. Sonny loves a chiropractic session after a cracking win at the Euros. Does look like he's about to be clicked yeah. majorly, doesn't he there? <laughs> Not quite sure what was happening, but yes, well done to you, uh, Matt on Master Sound. Send us a message on Facebook with your address. We'll get the bottle sent out to you. Uh, this week's caption photo is of another Italian champion, fresh off the back, or fresh in inverted commas, off the back of winning the World Individual Time Trial Championships on Sunday. I will get you started. Italy admits a new head compression technique to prevent its champions from getting too big-headed. Not particularly catchy as a caption competition, but it's the best that I could do as ever. Fair one. I'd go for Filippo Ganna gets a hack on Hack or Bodge. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know if you can do any better down in the comment section below, and you never know, you might get yourself a GCN Elite water bottle. Just before we get on to what's coming up on the channel over the next week, a couple of our favourite comments from the last week. Uh, these first two came under how to enjoy riding in the rain. Uh, first one came in from Kit Kat, who said the first time they rode in the rain with a cutout saddle, it was like riding a B-Day. <laughs> Immediately bought one of those plastic mud guards that you squeeze under it. Uh, whilst Henry Stone put, oh my goodness, I swear Hank could talk me into how much fun going for a lobotomy is. <laughs> 
Uh, I like this one, which was underneath the insiders look from a team car at the Tour of Britain. This is from Carl Conium. Uh, I had a brilliant chat with Hank before the start at Plymouth. My friend thought he was an old mate of mine, but we had never met before. I assume he's just the most friendly and approachable person you could wish to meet. Nice one, Hank, and good luck with the epic adventure you mentioned. Hank does actually treat everyone as if he's yes. his best mate. <laughs> what you see on screen is exactly what you get off screen. That the guy is just full of enthusiasm, <laughs> always friendly and always positive. Nice yeah. person to have around, isn't he? Yeah. Especially when you're on a way on a very intensive filming trip. Gets you up and running every morning. All uh, right, coming up on the channel this week, we'll start with Wednesday, which are 10 things that pretentious or snobby cyclists do. I haven't seen that one yet. In fact, I think you filmed it earlier on today. We actually you? filmed it today, so apologies to anyone in Bath City Centre who may have seen a, a bit of antics. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to that. Uh, Thursday, as ever, is the tech show over on GCN Tech. And on Friday, we're going to go through a few climbing mistakes that a few of you might be making. Hopefully, it will help you to improve. Yep, then on Saturday, we have Manon's first gravel race. And on Sunday, bike rafting in Scotland, uh, which is more from Manon and Jenny. Uh, adventures on the west coast and it did look pretty spectacular so I was pretty jealous actually. I know the, the photos did look great. Yeah. Didn't they? Yeah, they probably incredible. could have won GCN inspiration but it can't be insiders. Uh, meanwhile over on GCN Plus there is a lot going on. Uh, this week's documentary is end to end the relay uh, where Hank along with Mark Beaumont did a relay from Land's End to John O'Groats. So that is the first of two parts I believe with the following part coming out the next week where they did it on a tandem. Uh, also loads and loads of racing coming out. We've got the World Champion Championships all week, culminating on Sunday with the Men's Elite Road World Championships. There are quite a few territory restrictions on those though, so check what's available where you are. Uh, beyond that, the Grand Prix Dina, that is on today actually. In fact, by the time you watch this, it will probably already be done and dusted, but you can watch it on demand. And we've got a lot of cyclocross for you this weekend as well, with the third round of the Ethius Cross on Saturday, and the first two rounds of the brand new US Cyclocross Series on Saturday and Sunday. And because they're in the US, you'll be able to enjoy watching them in the evening. So you can have a full day's racing with the elite women's uh, in a road race on Saturday, the elite men's on Sunday with cyclocross in the evening. You won't have any time left to do anything else, I'm afraid. Hmm. There you go. Right, thanks everyone for watching once again. Hopefully the background music was okay this week, but we'll see you very shortly.